Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have another video for the Newton's Nook Designs March release and this is my last video, the last stamp set for the release. It is this smaller 3x4 stamp set called Newton's Birthday Flutter and it features as the main image this um, really funny image of Newton having eaten a bird and a lot of um, funny birthday sentiments around it as well as another little bird to set the scene and a birthday balloon. You saw yesterday on my Farmyard Friends card that I had used that birthday balloon, and it's definitely one of those great little things to have in your collection to always have on hand as, you know, to add as a touch to birthday cards. But I'm going to be showing you almost all the different stamps in this set today. I'm going to be doing a watercolor card, so I started with 140 pound Canson cold press watercolor paper, and I used my stitch rectangle die to cut it out so that I would have a panel to do all my watercoloring on. I'm going to be stamping in VersaFine ink today. I like it for watercolor, although the archival jet black will work as well. The reason that I like to go with the VersaFine is it's a little bit more sticky, and so I'm more sure that I'll get a nice crisp impression because watercolor paper tends to be a little bit textured, and I find it sometimes a little bit more tricky to stamp with. And so being able to get really sure with this fine ink, with the VersaFine ink is helpful to me. So I knew in my mind that I wanted to do something with a rainbow order and that the balloons would be coming across the card in a rainbow order. But I wanted to incorporate Newton and the birds in the stamp set as well. And I knew that Newton would have to be to the left and the birds to the right because they're facing to the right in order for everyone to kind of interact properly. Um, they should be facing each other in my um, opinion, essentially. So... I have started by stamping the balloons in a staggered pattern and fitting in the birds where they would make sense because I wanted to think of colors that would work out well for the birds. So um, with this pattern, the bird will wind up being yellow and then again blue towards the end. Like I wouldn't want a green bird because you don't really see many green birds in nature, particularly of this type you know, bird type. And so I thought, but yellow and blue are like really classic bird colors. And so it would work out well if I put those in the yellow and blue spots. And if I keep orange, Newton, sorry, Newton in the orange spot, because, um, you know, the original cat Newton is an orange cat. And so that would work out well. Once I had that sort of line of balloons and birds going across the page, I decided to add in the sentiment, and I am using this two-part sentiment that says, a little birdie told me it was your birthday. And then in the bottom corner, so I ate him. And at first this sentiment struck me as a little odd, but it's actually pretty funny, and I could definitely see some people appreciating that. I know as we get older, we don't always want everyone to know our age, and so I knew there would be someone out there that would really appreciate this funny card. And so I was able to fit the sentiment um, across from each other, and then I felt like there was still a little bit too much extra space in that top right corner, so I just stamped one more balloon in there really quickly. For my balloon strings, there is a balloon string in the stamp set. But because Newton is here and the birds are interacting with the balloons, I would have to do masking in order to use that stamp. So I decided instead to just draw in some balloon strings. And I'm using my Pit Artist pen from Faber-Castell. And I find that that is my personal favorite to use with watercolor. It definitely does not run with watercolor. And so that's just what I use. Now, when I do the watercoloring, I am using my Inktense pencils. And the reason that I chose to go with my Inktense pencils as opposed to my Koi watercolors, which I also love, is that with the Inktense pencils, you can lay on all of the color all over the card and then go in and blend it out. So you don't have to paint with one color, rinse your brush, move on to the next color, you know, rinse your brush and move on to the next color. You can just lay all the color out there and then switch your brush. And I also find that the brushes switch a little bit more easily, that they clean off more easily. And so what I'm doing with this rainbow order is I'm not doing just one red, one yellow, one green sort of thing, but I'm using all of the colors of red, all of the colors of orange, blue, green, etc. to create the card. And I have the 24 set of Inktense pencils. So there's like three different reds, two different oranges, two yellows, two greens. You know, so I'm just extending that and using each yellow, orange, green, you know, one time in one area and extending it across the card. Now, um, Later on, I kind of addressed the issue that what I found personally was that 
this left a little too much of the warm colors like there was a little too many elements in my opinion that were the yellows oranges and reds and they were dominating the blues and greens so i'll take care of that by adding in some cool colors in other parts of the card later on but when i color with my ink tense pencils i lay on the color where i think the shadows will be or wherever the image would be darkest and then when i go in with my water brush i will pull the color from the darkest areas into the lighter areas and get that natural gradient. And I think that it's super easy to get a really nice blended shadowed effect, even without having a lot of different colors, because as you pull them out, you get more colors. And um, it's not, like you don't have to um, think about layering in the color over time. It's all just kind of one go. You put the color where it should be the darkest, you pull it out, that's it. You know, there's not, like with Copics, you might have to go back two or three times. And for the balloons, I wanted to create the effect of the highlight, and I was able to decide where should be the lightest and darkest parts of the balloons by the natural highlight that is added there in the stamp. So there's that little um, detail, the little rectangle added into the balloons already, so I know that's where the highlight's supposed to be, and so I just laid my color down in the opposite corner, and I'm pulling it out. But in the end, I also will show you how I lighten up those little highlights a little bit more, because I did not avoid painting them completely, because I thought they should have some color to them. And when I color it with my ink tense pencils, I use my water brush without any water in it, and instead I spray water off to the side. I find that it gives me a little bit more control because I can control how it's wet. And you see there that I don't even use a napkin. I just kind of brush it off on my hand. And that's usually enough between switching colors. And um, you also, because you're not putting the color onto your brush, the color's really staying on your paper. And I think that's what makes it a little bit quicker than coloring with watercolors where you're really putting the color onto the brush and then transferring it to the paper. Instead, here you have the color on the paper and you're transferring it to the brush. So it's a little bit faster for cleaning. And so I've got pretty much all of the balloons here done and I'm keeping it quick and easy. And I'm moving from, in each color family, the warm and then the cool, I'm moving from the lightest to the darkest. So I started with the yellow, then I moved to the orange to the red, just so that I wouldn't have any blending issues or you know running of the colors. And then I went in with the white colored ink tense pencil and went over the highlights of the balloons to lighten them up a little bit. And I also felt that Newton didn't quite get enough shadows. So I went in and added just a few more shadows. And in that case, and you can't see it off screen, I'm sorry about that, I'm actually picking the color up directly from my pencil. So I'm touching the wet brush tip to the pencil and then applying it to the paper. And that allows me to layer in color when I'm finished. It doesn't really work to um, put the colored pencil, the ink tense pencil, over where you've already colored. I don't find that successful. I don't find that blends well. But if you touch the water brush to the pencil, you can layer in a little bit additional color. And also, I chose to make the feathers around him red because I was thinking that um, if in the color scheme, the red bird would have been there in the top left corner, but, you know, Newton kind of grabbed him out of the air already, and so that's why I pulled that red in there. As mentioned before, I did feel like there was a little bit too much of the warm colors, I think in part because Newton himself is so large compared to some of the other elements, and so I wanted to bring in some more cooler colors. So I started by adding a shadow under Newton, and I extend the shadow lightly across the whole page, and I'm using the charcoal gray ink tense pencil, layering that on underneath him, so like first scribbling, coloring that on, and pulling it out. And then in the areas where it's gotten too light, I'm just pulling a touch off of the pencil again. So you can definitely use the ink tense pencils interchangeably in either of those two ways, by pulling it off the pencil directly, or by coloring onto your card first. And once I have this shadow in there and the grounding surface, which, um, you know, the black is reads slightly more cool, I still want to add in just a touch of blue around him to bring a little bit of highlight to Newton for one, but also just to um, balance out all of the warm colors going on on that side of the card that I thought were a little bit heavy. So I'm taking one of the blue ink tense pencils and just adding the very smallest amount of blue. I'm not trying to get the entire surface behind him blue, but instead to add just a little bit of a kind of a blue halo around Newton, and I'll also add it around the two birds 
you know, and um, some of the other little elements. Just a little bit here and there to give the feeling of a sky without entirely coloring in the background and ruining the rainbow effect that I have going on here. And so once that's finished, I'll mount it onto a piece of black cardstock and then onto a white card base. And that's going to be it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in seeing more crafty videos, you can subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to win this set from Newton's Nook Designs, check out a link below to the blog hop, as well as finding any of the supplies that I used on today's card. Thanks for watching. Bye.